Hey there friends, this is Lauren from Mama's Learning Corner. I'm so glad that you've stopped back by my YouTube channel this week. I have um, something neat to show you to kind of spark some ideas for you and your own little ones um, if you're looking for activities for them throughout the day. So I can't wait to share those with you. Um, make sure that you subscribe to Mama's Learning Corner here on YouTube and you'll get an update each time I post a new video. And that's usually every one to two weeks um, during my YouTube season, which runs from February to May. And then I take the summer off and then um, it runs again from August to, or late July until November. And I usually post a video towards the beginning of the week, um, every week or two. So they're um, usually how to type videos, how I plan, the curriculum that I use um, in our homeschool. Um, I might branch out and do some other things later on in the year. Um, more related to our home and how our home runs, but for right now, it's, um, it's more homeschool related and things that work for us and definitely things that don't. So, But today I'm going to show you a few things that do work for us with my little girls. And just um, in case you're not familiar with my family, we have four children and they are 10. I have a boy that's 10 and then three girls and they are nine, six and a half, almost seven, and then five. Um, and if you teach more than one child at home at the time, then you know that it can be really challenging uh, trying to find enough activities, especially for those in the younger crowd, if you have older ones to work with. So I'm going to share with you some of the activities that I always have available for my younger girls, which are, again, five and almost seven. These are um, activities that they go to time and time again every single day. I'm sure that many of you have heard, um, you know, keep some activities just for school time. And, you know, so, they, so they're considered special and new, you know, all over again every single day, where they don't grow tired of them. And, I, and that really worked for us when my girls were in that toddler age and preschool age. But as, as they start to get a little bit older, kindergarten, first grade, you know, these are things that they want to use all the time. So who am I to hinder, you know, these great learning activities for them? And they certainly don't grow old. So, but a part of that is that I work to keep them, um, to keep new activities in our rotation. So today I'm going to show you a few of those activities that are, that we currently use. And my girls just turn to these time and time again. So let me show them to you. So I've got four or five different activities I'm going to show you that really keep my girls occupied during school time when I need to work with one of their um, older siblings. And these are items that I keep on a low shelf that my girls have access to, um, and they know that they can pick them up and use them anytime. And this is one that they often turn to, and it's these large Melissa and Doug um, coloring pads. And in fact, we have two of them. We have um, this one that, I don't know how you describe that. It's more... Um, Oh, springy, summery. Some of these are girly, some are not. It's, uh, garden, animals. Um, this would be a really good one for springtime, actually. Um, it definitely has more of a girl flair, as you can see by the pictures, unicorn shoes, those types of things. But um, there's also some boy-friendly ones, you know, a beach scene, and there's lots of um, animals, especially babies and their mothers. Lots of those in this book. Um, and I'll show you, I'll let you catch a glimpse of this animal one. The animal one is a big hit here at our house. Um, fish, frogs, horses, um, giraffes, turtles. So these are much more gender neutral, I would say. But ev my children just love these books. Um, usually my daughters want to use the twistable crayons. I'm not sure why those are so fun, but they are at the house, at this house. Um, and occasionally they break out the paint since um, the lines are so large. You know, it's not like a traditional coloring book where the where the lines are small because it's on, you know, an eight and a half by 11 page. So we, we use paint at times with these and sometimes, you know, they even uh, get out the construction paper and scissors and, you know, cut out a sun for their scene up here at the top or um, green paper for little and cut it um, along and glue it to the bottom as for grass or on the very rare occasion, um, they even get out the glitter glue, but I, that's on a day that I'm feeling brave and can, you know, handle the mess because I just can't handle, you know, mess every single day. 
Um, but this is a great quiet activity. If you have kids that love to color, I highly recommend these Melissa and Doug sets. I think they're only $5 a piece. So well, well worth the money. And speaking of coloring, this is a coloring book that I've actually bought a couple of times for my youngest girl, who is a huge colorer. Um, that's probably her activity of choice, in fact, coloring or drawing, or she's a pretty creative soul, so she really enjoys that. Um, this is an Usborne, my first color by numbers book. Um, and while it does have traditional color by number where you have a color code and, you know, says uh, the letter one equals red, the letter two equals yellow. What she really likes are these over here on the side where it has a dot and you color according to the dot color. She really enjoys that. Um, and she often chooses to do this particular book. You can see that this one's brand new because like I said, I've bought it a couple of times because um, she does it and then wants to do the book all over again. That's the sign of a really good activity book. Um, but she often uses colored pencils with this book. You know, like I said in the other... Um, with the other coloring pad, you know, she likes the twistables and with this, she likes the coloring, the colored pencils. So I try and keep a good variety of art supplies on hand. Um, you just kind of spices up the day for her. So this is, this, uh, Usborne, my first color by numbers book is definitely a hit with her. Another activity that I've bought several times, actually, I kid you not, this is the fourth time I have bought this particular Richard Scary book. Um, the first three times were for my oldest daughter, well, the oldest little girl who was seven. And then this one is for my, um, five-year-old. It's the Big Busy Sticker and Activity Book. I have a blog post about it, actually, that you've probably seen. The variety of activities in this book are just excellent, easy crossword puzzles. Um, a dot-to-dot -dot that she can do, mazes, tons and tons of stickers. Um, I just love it. Matching, um... There's more number dot to dots. Uh, let's see. Oh, they um, have stickers and you create the scene that you want to create for, you know, that particular um, topic. Um, this one is a little bit harder because you have to be able to read the words. So this is one that we would do together. Um, but this, you know, is a, like a hidden picture. This one's a checkup where they have all these different band-aids that you stick in the right places. This one she hasn't done yet, but you have to find the matching boat. Um, what I will do, oh, actually, that one goes with this page. Actually, I will go ahead and cut these out, and then she's able to find the page to match it. And if not, then I, of course, help her. And then she can, that helps make this an independent activity when I already have the, um, the sticker pages cut out. So this is just a hit all the way around. There's a few coloring pages, but not many. It's more like stickers and matching and, um you know, creating a scene and dot to dots. Just a super, super good book. This is a favorite. Another fabulous activity I want to share with you are these magnetic um, dollhouse sets. And actually, not all of them are dollhouse. I, we also have a Noah's Ark um, set, and one is a dress-up set, and then we have two dollhouses. And this seems like a lot, but these sets are just the best things ever. I think I paid 10 or $12 for them. So they come with magnetic pieces and then you open it up and there's a scene on the inside. And admittedly, the, the magnets just don't really stick all that well. Um, so my girls usually do it on a flat surface. Usually they're sitting on the floor or, um, or it's on their lap in the car. These are great car activities because they're not messy, you know, like crayons, you know, that can melt or markers would be. So they just find their pieces that they want to use and they, you know, make their little scenes. I cannot tell you, I cannot tell you how often my girls play with these particular activities every single week, every week, hours and hours. They love to create the little scenes. They love to change it up. Um, they typically use all of the, all of the magnetic pieces for all of the scenes. So since we have four or five of them, then they have a lot of pieces to choose from, which is just fun. I know that Amazon also sells these um, in a construction set. I think there's a regular town set, like a town, uh, a street, and a main street in a town type setting. Um, these are fabulous. They, I, I, in fact, I need to replace some of these because they've gotten old, but they are well, well worth their money. And one thing I love to do is to know that my money is going to be well spent because I'm like all of you, you know, we're, we're a 
we have a tight homeschool budget and just a tight budget in general. So if I'm going to buy something that's 10 or 12 or $15 for my girls, then I want to know that I'm getting a good value. And these are an excellent value for us. Another favorite um, activity for my little girls are these look inside books. They're lift the flat books. We have a variety of them, food, space, um, look inside a castle. This one is so neat. Look inside our world. We also have a look inside an airport book that you've probably seen on my blog. I've mentioned that several times. These are so good, even if you have non-readers. Um, and of course, you know, there's text on the page. Carrots are roots that grow underground. What is in this cupboard? You know, then it'll tell you the picture on each one. But even my five-year-old, who has zero interest in reading so far, she is so fascinated by, um, by these books. And in particular, the food and the castle books. This one is so neat. You can look inside the refrigerator and see what's inside the fridge. Um, it tells you, it's, it's a great book in that it tells you where our food comes from. Um, growing grains, fruits and vegetables, how we get food from animals, how we get food from the sea. And so very often in these books, there's flaps inside flaps, which just, you know, that's just cool. So I love these. I'll give you a quick peek at the castle one. Um, even for my girls who haven't really shown any interest in kings and knights and princesses, you know, they, they just haven't really been into that. This castle book is so cool. You can find the drawbridge. You can look inside the castle. It has a picture of um, the horse stables, you know, which are inside the, inside the city wall. A peek at the castle kitchen. So it's just a really neat book. I'll give you a peek at the space one also. Um, space, uh, how a rocket actually gets to space, um, facts about the moon, a space station, facts about um, the sun. You see this one is like a flap and a flap. So just really, really cool. Of course we go through and read these together. Um, but then they also have lots of independent time where they just sit and look at the pictures and open up each flap and, you know, see what little treasures are to be found under the flaps. Really neat books that my girls just adore. Okay, and the last activity I want to share with you that my girls love is the My Giant Busy Box, and it's from um, Alex, and it um, has 16 different activities, 16 different projects, and in fact, this is the third time I've bought this box, this particular box. Um, you know, this is over a series of years. Uh, actually, I've only bought it twice, but my sister-in-law sent it as a gift for the girls one time, and they just love it. It has a lot of varied activities. Um, they're in little pouches. They're all ready to go. There's usually um, easy, these are easy instructions. In fact, most of them don't even have instructions because you don't need them. Um, lots of different activities. One is to create like a little sticker pizza. One is to create a little garden. It has Play-Doh. It has um, big googly eyes to go on the puppets that they're going to create. It has little streamers that they stick on to create texture on the texture on the puppets. Comes with a glue stick. Comes with crayons, pipe cleaners. It's a packed kit. I can't exactly remember how much it is. Hmm, may, maybe $19.99, but I'm not certain. I'll, I'll check on the price and leave it in the blog post that'll accompany this video. Well worth the money, though. Um, oftentimes, once my girls finish school and it's not a pretty day outside and they have to stay in, they just get out this big box, break out the big pom-poms and create a, create a cool puppet or uh, whatever craft they want to work on for that day. This is an excellent, excellent value. So I would love to hear what you um, use in your own homes with your own children. You know, in those smaller, um, younger ages, when they still need good learning activities to do during the day. You know, it's always so neat to take a little glimpse into somebody else's home and see what they use and what they do and, you know, what their homeschool is like. Then you can take those little tips and, you know, figure out how you can use them in your own home. So I'd love to hear some ideas about what you, activities that you have planned for your own kids. Um, just leave a comment here on YouTube or you can email me. It's mama, M-A-M-A, -A, at mamaslearningcorner.com. Um, or you can just visit me and leave a message on this blog post. The link will be in the YouTube video. So I can't hear, wait to hear um, some of your ideas. You know, having fresh ideas, there's nothing like it in the homeschool world. And thankfully, there are so many homeschool sites and blogs that, you know, ideas are just um, 
very plentiful. So we are very blessed in this current age of homeschooling when there's just so many good ideas that we can glean from. Okay, I can't wait to see y'all next week. I'll have another video ready for you. Um, if you ever have a topic you'd like to hear me talk about, you're welcome to email that to me, and I'll be happy to work it into the, work it into the YouTube rotation. So thank y'all for stopping by today. I'll see you soon.